What's up geeks and gamers? It's Jeremy coming to you with another video and today we're gonna talk more about social justice warriors the gift that keeps on giving because when you are successful and you've done something that's pretty awesome instead of appreciating the characters and the business decisions and the business model that helped you get there you should just throw shade at it. Why? Because of Trump. Because it's Trump's fault. Trump, we have to shit on Trump. So instead of respecting the people that helped get us here, we're just going to talk bad about Trump and make crazy connections to Trump. So the Bl a Black Panther writer thinks Iron Man wouldn't work today. The same Iron Man that was in almost every movie Iron Man's been in since uh, the Avengers has crossed a billion dollars. You've had the Avengers, 1.5 billion. You had Age of Ultron, 1.4 billion. You had Civil War, 1.1 billion. You had Iron Man 3, 1.2 billion. You had well, Spider-Man: Homecoming, uh, what was it, 850, 900 million? Uh, is that the only ones he's been in up to this point? Obviously, Infinity War is going to do ginormous numbers. Uh, Iron Man is box office gold. Tony Stark, uh, I mean, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man is box office gold. It doesn't matter when he comes out, he will always generate revenue. So Iron Man helped basically single-handedly helped get the MCU started. And instead of appreciating that, instead of being thankful for that, you should just, oh no, you can't be thankful for it. You can't go, hey, you know, I'm glad that, that Iron Man helped us get to this point. So instead of that, you got to take shots at Trump. So... Black Panther co-writer Joe Robert Cole suspects the response to Tony Stark from the original Iron Man would have been much more critical had the movie opened in theaters. Now, the Marvel Cinematic Universe celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, meaning it's now been a decade since Robert Downey Jr. made his big screen debut as the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist, we weapons manufacturer turned superhero. It also means the world has changed a whole lot since the Iron Man suited up in the MCU. Oh, God. Ugh. There's been an increased focus of diversifying the MCU, but the Hollywood industry at large in the years since Downey Jr. and Jon Favreau made their first comic book movie together. Characters such as Wonder Woman and Black Panther, and so basically it's getting into Wonder Woman and Black Panther were successful because of diversity. Not because they were good movies. No, it was all because of diversity. That is the stupidest, most idiotic claim any person can make. If Black Panther and Wonder Woman were bad movies, then they would not have done well. It's that simple. They did well because they were good movies. Um, Batman, a character that's been around for decades and decades and decades, he's always been successful when his movies are good. When his movies aren't good, he doesn't do good. Like Batman and Robin was a pile of shit, and it did terrible at the box office. It did terrible critically. It did terrible with the fans. It was Batman, and it's not like Batman didn't have a lot of prominence at that point in time, because Batman had been huge in Batman 89, and even Batman Returns. Everybody was on the Batman hype train in 89. And then you got Batman Forever, which started to kind of, it started dwindling back after that, and then Batman and Robin. A bad Batman movie. Then you get great Batman movies, and they do extremely well because they're good movies. So the genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist business model will be good if the movie is good. It's that simple. So to think that Iron Man wouldn't be successful at this point in time, if you took that exact movie from 2008 and brought it into 2018, it's idiotic to say the least. But Trump... Trump! It's all Trump's fault! So the exact quote, and this is what I love. This is what I love, okay? The exact quote. Think about where we are now with this very vapid, unintelligent president and our world is crackling on the edges because of that. Think back to Tony Stark. Him being douchey and being okay. If that character Stark was created in a movie today, I wonder if the response would be like, oh, it's cool that he's douchey and disrespectful to women. That's fine. I think we're in a different place. I think a better place. Are you, oof, are you freaking kidding me right now? So 
instead of being appreciative of the platform that Iron Man helped build and put Black Panther on so Black Panther could enjoy this success, instead of you just being appreciative of that, you decide to try to connect Tony Stark and his success to your hatred of Trump. This is why nobody takes you seriously. This is why you lost the election. This is why Trump won. You clearly, your side does not understand that common people don't think like that. They just don't. And it's really just hilarious at this point that, like, we're at a point where, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I want everybody. I, I just, I need confirmation here in the comments, okay? So, Tony Stark worked in 2008, okay? But he wouldn't work in 2018, right? Didn't Trump win? Like, didn't Trump win the election? Oh, well, Jeremy, he didn't win the popular vote. Whoa, what, is that what the election is built off of? Or is it the Electoral College? Which one is it? I mean, oh, so we're changing the rules now. Trump won the election. That's the bottom line. You don't have to like it. And I completely respect if you don't like Trump. That's not the problem here. You can hate Trump. Why the fuck are we trying to connect Tony Stark and his relevance to pop culture to your hatred of Trump when you just had a movie that came out that made 1.1 billion? The victim card will never end. It doesn't matter. Black, uh, uh, black unemployment is at an all-time low right now, and Trump is president. The economy is booming right now, and Trump is president. Black Panther just broke down barriers, according to, to, to everyone, broke down racial barriers, and Trump is the president. Hispanic unemployment is nearly at an all-time low, and Trump is the president. So what is so what is why how is the world crackling? Because there's tragedies? Well, there was tragedies under Obama, there was tragedies under George Bush, there was tragedies under Clinton, there was tragedies under George H.W. Bush, there was tragedies under Reagan, there's going to be tragedies after Trump. What exactly is, how is the world crackling? Give me some data, give me some facts. Don't give me your MSNBC version of the world crackling. Just like when Fox News would talk about Obama, don't give me the Fox News Sean Hannity version of Obama's America. Give me some data, give me some facts. If you want to discuss data and facts, I'm fine having that discussion with you. But when you just want to make blanket, stupid generalizations with no data, then all you're doing is showing your ignorance and your bias. So Tony Stark would still be successful today because Tony Stark is a fantastic character because he has a fantastic actor playing the role, and that is Robert Downey Jr. It would be just as successful, if not more so. And guess what? Infinity War is going to blow the doors off. Will it be all because of Robert Downey Jr.? No. But he still is the face of that team and that franchise. My personal favorite is Captain America. I love Captain America. I love Chris Evans' Captain America. But... Tony Stark is selling the tickets. Make no mistake about it. And he has been for a decade. And Black Panther, you just did phenomenal things. And I have all the respect in the world for that film. And I, I think everyone did a great job. But one of the main reasons you have the platform you have is because of Iron Man. So instead of trying to use Iron Man to hate on Trump, just be appreciative of the person that helped get you here. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later.